Hi everyone, Sane Man here. This video is brought to you by a donation from Michael, and here's what he has to say. Hey man, this is Mike and I found you on Facebook and I wanted to donate and request a specific topic. Basically this trend of women living with their parents well into their 30s. I find it really odd considering that they want a man to accept this. Feel free to run with it however you want. Well Mike, thanks for your donation as well as your topic. Men always seem to get shame for living in their mother's basement jerking off and playing video games, but when a woman hangs out in her mother's basement, we aren't supposed to say anything. As men, we're expected to rescue her from her mother's house and give her a good life. You're now the second person in the last few weeks that's been telling me about women in their 30s still living with their parents. If you think that's bad, I know some women in their 40s and one woman that's 45 that I briefly dated as an experiment to see what older women are like, and she also lives with her mother. If a woman is single into her 30s and she's never been married and has trouble finding a job or perhaps keeping one, then her fallback plan is usually her parents. However, many women have falling outs with their mothers, so they end up moving into houses with roommates and here in Toronto end up paying anywhere between $500 and $1,000 a month for a tiny room in a house because supposedly that makes them less of a failure. I see nothing really wrong with grown adults living with their parents so long as they're employed and are saving their money for a house or apartment regardless of if they're saving for a down payment or to buy the property outright with no mortgage. Why throw away money renting when you can save tens of thousands of dollars living with your parents for either a down payment or for the full purchase price? So long as a child is not a financial burden on his parents, I have no issues with this. Here in Canada, we have two outrageously expensive cities, with the average three-bedroom bungalow costing roughly $1 million. In most of the United States, a million-dollar home is a mansion with a pool and palm trees, but in Canada, increasingly, it's just a two-bedroom or three-bedroom shack with crack whores up the street. So a decent-sized down payment of 10 to 20% is going to be anywhere between $100,000 to $200,000. When is either a single woman or single man going to make that much money and save it so they can put it down as a down payment? I'm afraid that in North America, adult children will be living with their parents much the same way that European children do, either until they get married or until their parents die and leave them the house. But that still doesn't excuse the double standard here in North America where men are shamed for living with their parents in their basement, while women are not. The 45-year-old woman I went on a couple of dates with still believed that she could get herself pregnant, buy a house, and then raise a family. I bet that many of the women in their 30s feel the same way, and they're just waiting around for a man to rescue them from their mamas. Two adult women living under the same roof are fun to watch like a barrel of monkeys. They both want to rule the home like it's their castle, and they're constantly getting on each other's nerves. In some ways, this makes life easier for the man in the house, if there is one, because all he has to do is sit back and watch these two fine creatures attack one another. But if it's just him and his wife, she most likely will nag him to death instead. In an American city like Phoenix, Denver, Minneapolis, or possibly even Orlando, a house is only typically a couple hundred thousand dollars. So realistically speaking, it should take a woman a few years to save a decent sized down payment if she puts away most of her disposable income while she's living at home. If she does this from the age of 20 to 30, then she'll have enough money saved up to almost buy the house completely. But as we all know, most women are not very good at saving money, so when they hit 30, they have almost no money in their name. A friend of mine is in his late 30s and he's living with his mother, but he has over half a million dollars saved. He also drives a BMW, goes on a vacation three or four times annually, and still makes over $100,000 a year. At this point, he's pretty much going his own way except for living with his mother, and he doesn't see the need to purchase an overpriced million-dollar home with roughly 10 rooms so he can just mow the lawn and shovel the snow in the winter. He already does that for his mother right now, and he doesn't want to pay for the privilege of doing so on his own. People can easily say that he's a loser that lives in his mother's basement, but the car and money prove otherwise. In fact, he has women lining up to date him, and they know that he lives with his mother, and because he is of a European descent, that's perfectly acceptable. Because to them, they also come from similar backgrounds. Many of those women are also in their 30s and also living with their parents. A man also doesn't need a full-sized house or apartment if he's living alone and doesn't plan to have a family or get married. I'm happy renting out a small industrial unit with an office in the front and a bedroom in the middle, as well as a tiny bathroom, and I've also managed to jerry-rig a shower to it, and it works perfectly for me, because the back door also has a garage door, and I drive my car right up into my studio space slash living room. For me, I live and work in the same place, and it's cheaper than renting an apartment, and it provides me more space than I need. People are usually working in the units next to me during the day because I usually don't get up until 1 or 2 o'clock. By the time I have my shower and start breakfast and start to work, it's generally 3 or 4 o'clock. People are then heading out from their homes, and I have complete peace and quiet. I like this space for business, and many of my clients don't even know that I live here. Eventually, I want to buy a house when the real estate prices fall, rent out four or five rooms in it, and keep one for myself. 
I will also make sure that the house has a two-car garage and I will turn that into a studio space and my own small apartment. I can collect almost $3,000 a month in rent from my so-called roommates while spending most of my days in the garage because that's what I really need, a workshop and not a house with a living room, a kitchen, and an entertainment room. Just think back to Doc Brown's laboratory in the Back to the Future films. That's what I want except the second floor added. Women, on the other hand, need a full-size house so they can show off their status to their family and friends. If they don't have it given to them by a man, then most of them won't earn it for themselves. They simply don't have the impulse control to save up for something that big. The women I've dated in the past in their 20s and 30s would either have roommates or they would have tiny one-bedroom apartments that would take up all of their disposable income. They had no money left over to save at the end of the day. So how on earth are they ever going to own their own place? The answer to that is they won't, and as they get older with no retirement savings and no husband, as well as no property, when they finally stop working, they'll probably get into government housing because that's the only thing cheap enough for them to rent with their measly government income checks. Just ask yourself what happens to such women when their parents eventually get sick and need to be put into a retirement home. The parents usually sell the house and take the money and use it to pay for their long-term care facilities in that nursing home. What happens to the former cock carousel riding princess living with her parents? She ends up getting a rude wake-up call somewhere between the age of 50 and 60 if she's still with her parents. Many of you say, but that's not likely to happen, but I would wager it happens more often than you think. That 45-year-old woman that told me that she lives with her mother felt no embarrassment or shame sharing her situation. But if I were to drop a story like that on her, I would be laughed out of town. In Europe, some of my cousins got married and they still couldn't afford to live on their own, so one of the male cousins moved in with his wife into the family home. His sister got married as well and she moved into an apartment above the groom's parents' house too. It's only really since around the time of the Industrial Revolution where adult males and females were expected to form their own household separate of their parents and siblings and clan once they got married. Someone recently sent me a video request claiming that his parents spoiled his 30-plus-year-old sister and let her live at home. Well, at the same time, his brother and him were basically kicked out. The two brothers were taught to be self-reliant and to work hard, while the sister had her education paid for by the parents, including a master's degree, and they had no issue keeping her at home well into her 30s. He was complaining about this, but I told him that he was the one that lucked out because he learned to become self-reliant and pay for his own education instead of just having everything handed to him throughout life. I know one woman in her mid-40s that still lives with her mother, and she's extremely cheap and has saved about a million dollars working as a secretary for 25 years, as well as some inheritance from her grandmother. I might have actually gone for her years ago, but she smokes like a chimney, and she's not very attractive and has duck-like feet, like a Canada goose wearing a long wig. At least she doesn't have to worry about sharing a room in a retirement residence with some disgruntled granny that was once a former cock carousel rider. A friend of mine as well as myself are thinking of buying a retirement residence so we can collect the money back from the women that stole it from their husbands in the first place. We thought that that might actually be like poetic justice, but neither of us can really deal with the smell of granny crap coming out of their used up poop shoots. So where, you ask, is all this heading? I believe that North America and Europe are heading for the same place as Japan. In Japan, there are many elderly seniors that have no family, but they need someone to take care of them into their old age, and they don't have the money to pay for it. So what many of them are doing is creating communities of people in their 60s, 70s, and 80s that are in relative good health, and the deal is the people that get sick get taken care of the people that are still healthy. When you don't have a family and you don't have the money to pay for a nursing home, sometimes making a deal with a perfect stranger or lifelong friend isn't such a bad idea. In the past, people didn't have to do this because they had their children or their significant other to take care of them into their golden years. Most women didn't care too much about this in the past because their husbands would quite often work themselves to death or possibly even eat or drink themselves to death for that matter, so in the end they would have their husband's retirement money or life insurance policy to take care of them into their old age. But as marriage becomes less common and good-paying jobs are hard to come by, this will no longer be an option going forward. Many of us in the future might need to live together in a big house with four other dudes the way we saw in the film Fight Club. Because if you don't have kids or any other relatives to look after you, and you don't have the money to pay for a luxurious retirement residence, then you need to find some other way to make sure that your final days are as comfortable as possible. Personally, I'd rather be with a bunch of like-minded guys trying to figure out the best ways to live their final days than to be served by some Filipino nurse that's secretly trying to steal my money and throw me out on the street. Vention MGTOWs made a few videos discussing how men should take care of themselves as they get older. He says that having lots of money and gold and possibly land are a good way to go. But if your mind starts to go, you need to find someone to trust with regards to power of attorney. Because if you get Alzheimer's and you don't have the proper setup for such a situation, then the government decides what happens to you and how to divide your assets. But that's another story for another day. 
Thanks again, Mike, for your donation as well as your topic request. Also, don't forget to check out the MGTOW mystery link. As for everyone else out there, please follow me on Twitter or like me on Facebook to get tomorrow's video today. Thanks for taking your daily dose of red pills. And remember, a red pill a day keeps grannies still living with their parents away. So enjoy the rest of your day, and cheers.